Assalamu alaikum. My name is Dr. Talha and today we will be doing a thyroid examination. So I've washed my hands already and I've introduced myself to the patient. We will make sure that the environment we've provided to the patient is private and safe and comfortable. After this, we've put the patient in a sitting position as so and we'll also ask permission from the patient. So can I examine you? All right. For the exposure of this examination, which is the thyroid exam, we will make sure that the, the face, the neck and the upper chest is exposed for the patient. All right. And we're standing on the right side of the patient. So for the first part of the thyroid examination, we'll be doing inspection. So for inspection, you're looking for any generalized swellings that may be there or any localized swelling at the thyroid. So you're looking for any swellings. You're also looking for any scars that may be seen. And you're also looking for any dilated veins that you may be seeing. And you're also looking for any redness. After you're done with this, you will ask the patient to swallow right? Swallow, um, swallow some water and then assess the movement of the thyroid gland, all right? And this you're doing to rule out any thyroglossal cysts, for example. So we're going to ask the patient to drink uh, some water. Okay, and swallow. Okay, and you're looking at the movement of the of the thyroid gland. For the palpation part of this exam, what we're gonna go for is, we're gonna be starting by asking the patient that we're gonna be palpating the thyroid gland from the back of the patient, so that the patient doesn't get startled when we do so. So let the patient know that you're gonna be palpating from the back. So we'll move behind the patient as so, and we'll place our hands behind the patient's neck like so. So place your thumbs together behind the patient's neck and wrap your fingers around the patient's thyroid gland. Now, what you're gonna go for is, or wrap your fingers around the neck so that you can feel for the thyroid gland. Now, we're gonna begin by palpating the thyroid gland. What you need to do, go for is, when we're palpating the right side of the thyroid gland of the patient, we're gonna be retracting the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the left side to relax the muscles of the patient, right? And then you're gonna palpate on the right as so. You're palpating for the low on the on the right side, and you're also palpating the isthmus of the, which is the central point of the thyroid gland. After this, you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So retract the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the right side, and you're feeling on the right side of the patient. And make sure that the patient's neck is flexed while you're doing this examination to relax the head further. So again, we will repeat the exam. Make sure that the muscle is relaxed over here, and you are palpating the thyroid gland area over here. And we'll repeat the same way, re uh, relaxing the sternocleidomastoid muscle on the right side and palpating on the left side. Now, you need to repeat this very examination while you're asking the patient to drink some water. So again, we'll ask the patient to drink some water and we'll be doing the same process to palpate the thyroid gland while the patient swallows, all right? Next, we'll ask him to drink some water again Okay, and we'll palpate again. So you're palpating the lobe and the isthmus on the right and the left side. So normally the thyroid gland is not palpable. So your comment will be the thyroid gland is not palpable. In case you do have, you do palpate a mass, you need to comment on the size of the mass, the shape of the mass, the consistency of the mass, if the mass is painful or not, if it's tender or not, and you also have to comment on the mobility and whether there's a thrill or not. What's the thrill of the thyroid gland? A thrill would be an audible murmur. So these vibrations that you feel with your fingers. So now you're done with the palpation part of this exam. Next, we're gonna to move towards the percussion part of this exam. So why exactly are we percussing the patient? Well, we're percussing for any thyroid enlargement, all right? So you're gonna be uh, percussing ar al uh, along the manubrium sternum to check for any dull notes. Normally, it should all be resonant. So we'll just uncover the patient a little bit and you are you're at the manubrium sternum here. So you'll just start percussing. Make sure your hand is in complete contact with the patient's uh, chest, all right? And then your finger is hyperextended and we'll percuss. All right, and then you're gonna move to the side and move to the side. Normally, it will all be resonant. After this, we'll move on towards the auscultation for the thyroid gland. So for the auscultation of the thyroid gland, we'll just wear our stethoscope simply and make sure your stethoscope is warm so as to avoid any discomfort for the patient. And then we'll place our stethoscope at the lobes of the thyroid gland.
you're hearing for any sorts of murmurs or any additional sounds that you may hear at the thyroid gland, which may indicate certain types of pathologies. After we're done with the auscultation, we will do a special test, which is called the Pemberton sign. So what is the Pemberton sign, you might ask? We'll ask the patient to raise both their hands above their head, and we'll be assessing for any congestion. So we'll ask the patient to raise both their hands above their head, like so, and we'll ask them to keep it so for a minute. After a whole minute, you'll be looking at the face for any signs of congestion, for any signs of cyanosis, and, and in general, any signs of discomfort, respiratory discomfort. After this, we'll ask the patient to lower their hands. And to conclude this examination, we'll do a lymph node examination. So that will consist of firstly the submental nodes. The submental nodes, as the name suggests, are underneath the chin. Then we'll move on towards the submandibular nodes, which are below the jaw, right below the angle of the jaw. Then we'll move on towards the jugular chain, which are just anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Then we'll be dealing with the posterior triangle nodes, which are posterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Then we'll move on towards the occipital nodes, which as the name suggests, are in the occipital region. Then we'll be left with posterior auricular, which is behind the ear, and then pre-auricular, which is in front of the ear. Lastly, we'll move on towards the front of the patient to palpate the, uh, the supraclavicular lymph nodes. And for this, this is the only part of the lymph node examination in which we'll be in front of the patient. For all of the other lymph node examinations that we've mentioned, we'll be behind the patient. And now allow me to demonstrate. So firstly, we'll begin with the submental lymph nodes, right, which are just underneath the chin. Then we're going to move on towards the submandibular lymph nodes as so. Then we're going to drop down towards the jugular chain, which is anterior to the sternomastoid muscle. So we're going towards the anterior all the way down. Then we're going to shift towards the, uh, the for the posterior triangle nodes. So now we'll be palpating the occipital lymph nodes. We'll be using our two fingers to palpate near the occipital region, as so. Then we're going to move on towards the posterior auricular lymph nodes. Okay, so just behind the ear. Then we're going to move on towards the preauricular lymph nodes. Okay, and so now we're done with the posterior part of this examination. Okay, so our last lymph nodes will be the supraclavicular lymph nodes, and for them, we'll be moving in front of the patient. We'll ask the patient to shrug their shoulders. So, can you shrug your shoulders? There you go. We'll be feeling around the supra in the supraclavicular fossa for the supraclavicular lymph nodes. After this, our comment will be, normally the lymph nodes aren't palpable, so that will be our comment. So ultimately, thank the patient, help the patient cover up, wash your hands, and that concludes your examination.